Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at a proof of the five lemma, which might be a little overkill because we're gonna use a spectral sequence argument. Nonetheless, it'll give a light introduction to spectral sequences and show um, a simple application of them. Okay, so we're going to assume that we have a monic, a monic, and an epi. And we're gonna show that the middle map or morphism right here is an epi. So let's go for it. We're going to turn our commutative diagram into a double complex, requiring that um, following two horizontal arrows will be zero, um, which in our assumption, we're assuming that the top row and the bottom row are exact. And in fact, if we have a zero map composed before anything composed with zero, zero is a zero map right there, um, we we basically get it, even if we extend our arrows going this way and that way to, to zeros everywhere. Um, even if it's not exact at that point, you still have this differential happening with that criterion. And then up and down, we require the same, a similar thing, which will hold, especially since we have a zero here and a zero there, definitely. Okay, so two differentials in a row. Differential is just the name for the morphism. We get zero. So we get complexes going this way and that way. We also want to alternate signs throughout so that we get, um, which we can, we can just modify the diagram so um, signs commute. I mean, things about um, that we're going to be looking for won't change at all. Um, when we think about epis or monics or whatever, it'll still work just fine. But what, what that does is it makes things anti-commute. So if I go this way, it's the, it will be the opposite sign as if I go this way in the map which is fine. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is because it makes, we can get another complex out of this with a double differential being zero. If we do that, what we're going to do is see how these arrows go this way and that way. If you just pick a point and you take the arrow down and over, um, then draw a line through those and look at that diagonal. Um, so essentially I said that because this, the arrows could be pointing in different directions and that's how you, you pick it. Um, take the direct sum of all the objects in that diagonal. You can imagine this diagonal going on forever that way, that way with just lots of zeros um, where we don't have anything. Um, and we get, uh, so this diagonal um, will, as a direct sum, will map to this diagonal via, the, via kind of this all consolidated into one map, say where you're taking like uh, here, it's like the sum of those two guys and, you know, that guy or whatever. So um, over here, um, and so we get this, and if we double it up like that, um, using the anti-commutativity property, if you just did a, just did a foil of a, of a difference of two squares or something, you'll, you know, the middle guys uh, cancel out and you just have the d squared and d squared. Um, so it's zero. So it's a complex as we go along. Um, and, uh, Spectral sequences focus on information about the uh, homology of this total complex or cohomology, depending on if you want to reverse um, the order of indices, if you want them to be climbing or, or going down. But it really doesn't matter. It's the same basic idea. So we could easily just change this to the top for cohomology or bottom the way we want our indices to travel. And it's going to be just fine. Um, the same ideas hold. So we're going to be gleaning information. Now, the information that we get about the homology of this complex will help us actually know about things um, that are happening before. So that's um, the way we, we go about with spectral sequence arguments. OK, so let's kind of look at the setup, how this works. Uh, imagine we have one of these diagonals. And let's just take an element in, in a direct sum of one of these diagonals, but one such that um, we have a leading term um, right here at the forefront at the top, and then meaning we have zeros above and then everything else, it doesn't matter what it is, but we have zeros above it at least. Now we're gonna pick something like that, but we're, all, but we're also going to pick something like that such that um, when we go ahead and run it through the differential for the, uh, for the total complex, which is the name of the complex for the diagonals, um, we're gonna get a zero here, uh, right across from from, from A here. What we'd, like, what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to now mod out by something such that um, 
that the pathway from A to E is well defined if we wanted to make a map just from this location to this location only. Um, um, but it's being played off of the choice that we made on the total com uh, in the total complex in this particular object in the direct sum of just of A, B, C, and all these guys. So this E really will come from you know from what happens further below in this element, but um, but uh, we want to mod out by the right things so that it's well defined. So what if why don't we do this? Why don't we just um, subtract um, two things um, where we that uh, that have a leading term a here um, that um, that do the same thing. So of course we have so we have a zero there. So um, we do that um, and think we have a zero. Think b minus b prime. Maybe if b prime is like the other guy. Um, maybe C minus C prime and so forth going down. Um, B minus B prime will go to like an E minus E prime. We want that to be well defined. So we want that to turn out to be zero. Well, simply, if we just mod out by the horizontal images, we'd make it. Think of what we're doing. To get this A, we assumed we were in the kernel of a horizontal, and now we're gonna mod out by the images of the horizontal. We're taking horizontal homology. So we have a map from horizontal homology here at this location, uh, vertically down to horizontal homology right here at this location, and it's going to be well defined. All right, that's from. So we've changed our commutative diagram to maybe look a little differently. So kind of at first we concentrate on horizontal arrows between things. We're going to take homology, and then we're going to look at the vertical arrows um, between um, the horizontal homology that we took. Now let's go to the next the next place um, from page one to page two, say, is what, is what we call it. Now we take elements in this uh, direct sum diagonal right here that have a leading term um, A and zeros above, such that we actually get zero here and here as we take this differential um, in the total complex. So we're going to take that, and we'd like to, there to be a map from A to F that's well defined. Well, we do a similar thing, subtract off two things that would have a leading term of A the same, so we get a zero there. Think about what's happening. We want this F minus F prime here to be zero so it to be well-defined. So we're only mapping to one thing. What do we do? Um, well, in order for that to be zero, mod out by the image of just a one single horizontal one and vertical from each position everywhere, I mean, we'll get it. So let's think about what's happened now. Um, now we're modding out by uh, we're taking uh, we're taking like the kernel of the vertical and modding out by the image of the vertical. We're taking vertical homology. So um, the vertical homology at this location maps to the vertical homology at this location. There's a well-defined map going from here to here. Um, now you might ask, I mean, can we really do that here? Um, yes, and you know this was a complex going up and down. We had. Um, the differential is going up and down, d squared was equal to zero. So this is good. We can take that vertical homology. So um, second page actually looks like um, the vertical homology of the horizontal homology. And then we have maps that kind of go like this from here to here, going down um, between objects like that. So we just have like one flow of, of arrows. Now, keep going, all right, from page two to page three, do something very similar. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to take something in the kernel of like going from here to here, here, here. So not just horizontal, vertical, but then also what we just barely did, that map right there. Um, and doing a similar thing in order to make this, to guarantee this is zero, we basically need that the image of Chun Jun, um, so right here, to be zero in order for that to work, to be well-defined. So kind of what we're doing now is we're taking the homology. So now we're taking the homology with respect to of what we had. So horizontal, the vertical of the horizontal, but then we're taking that and then taking the homology along these arrows. Assuming that those arrows are nice differentials and we have, um, um, and so two in a row will give you zero. And that does follow. Um, uh, two in a row does, does give you zero if you work out the, uh, the details on that. So um, each time we get, what happens? 
we get a little bit more information at a location um, uh, for this particular homology. In fact, we get all the information really that we need because we're assuming, for instance, we're assuming that this is a leading term. So where is it um, a leading term from all these zeros um, as we move along? So really kind of what happens above right here, we just have lots of zeros. So even if we were focusing on making maps going upward, it, we just get zeros every time up there. So um, really the only thing that's affected is arrows that come from A going down this way um, that are affected in this particular way. Um, so that's, that's great. And then similarly for things coming into A. So we're, we're, we're pretty much collecting um, all the homology information that we need um, at that point. Um, okay, now let's think about this a little bit. Um, if we have a leading term A, B, C, so we're focusing on elements that have a leading term here of that's non-zero, that's not really a subgroup or a sub-object. It's a quotient um, because, I mean, a quotient would be assuming that we have a zero here and looking at all these elements down here. So um, we're like taking a quotient and then we're putting homology information in kernels and images. So in the end, when we stabilize, when things stabilize at the end, after we did this enough time and collect all the information, what we actually get right up here is a quotient of that um, of the homology of the total complex um, uh, with the di between the direct sums of the diagonals. Down here, you get a sub object um, instead. Well, think about it. You have because you're focusing on zeros up here. Um, um, and, uh, and then here, you don't care if it's zero or what, but just basically you're just taking the elements of that object and working with them. So that is a sub object and then you're working with it and you end up getting a sub object of the homology in the end. Um, <clears throat> now keep in mind, everything that we've talked about is, uh, I, I've mentioned homology, but it really could be cohomology. Um, um, if we just reverse if, which way the indices really travel as we move along the arrows, but really all of this applies in both cases. Okay, so um, now we could have actually done the same argument, taking leading terms on the bottom going up instead of on the top going down. And then and we'd, we'd be going this pattern like this, um, going out this that way. Um, but we only really need to do that if our leading term starts at this point. Um, and then we've, in, in, in essence, we're gonna get zeros if we did it down here, if we kept on going. So you can imagine this process kind of going this way and that way, you know, from here to every single location along this diagonal going up and down, but you just know down here at zeros if this was a leading term. So we really kind of collect have collected all the homology information that we've needed as we go in and out. If we did this pattern, then the quotient would be at the bottom here um, and the subobject kind of at the top, um, at least for the non-zero cases when we kind of stabilize things at the end um, of, the, of, the, of the homology. <clears throat> um, one thing to notice, though, as we're going along, what if stabilizing, we end up getting lots of zeros in the diagonal, and that's all we get? as we keep going through this process and it stabilizes and we just have lots of zeros. What in the world does that mean? <clears throat> well, um, let's think that means that no matter, well, I mean, we're gonna be working with objects or elements that have leading terms and they're gonna be represented by leading terms in the original complex somehow. So everything's gonna be represented by here if it's non-zero um, by, by something happening here. So if you get zeros every, everywhere, that means after collecting all the information, no matter where you're at, um, especially if this is kind of a bounded thing, um, it's just gonna be zero homology for the total combo. So we can actually compute, it's nice when we can see that, that we get zero homology in a whole diagonal. Um, but even still, if we get things non-zeros, at least we have quotients and sub-objects and those are really nice for making um, long exact sequences or short exact sequences are just things, you know, where we're relating um, uh, kernels and, and co-kernels together. That's a really nice thing too, as we move along. So we at least gain enough information to get to our goals as we look through, 
at spectral sequences. Okay, that's quite a bit now. Let's move along and just use these ideas to um, quickly prove this five line. All right, let's let's um, uh, look at where we start with um, horizontal arrows. So horizontal arrows, and then we're moving downward kind of in our sequence. So we first start by taking homology of horizontal. We can start there. So if we take homology of horizontals, um, because the top row and the bottom row are exact, we get zeros and we get zeros here. Well, that tells us right away that the homology uh, um, right at this location of the total complex in this location will be zero, just as we discussed. All right, so let's, we're gonna use that. That's gonna help us know about a few things with stabilizing. Okay, now let's look at the, another perspective. Um, this is the perspective when we go, um, when we start downward and then we move our maps going up. Um, so that means we take the homology first going downward. Um, and if we do that, let's think about what happens. So on this end, we're assuming that this is an epi. And if we assume this is an epic uh, or an epimorphism, then um, we have, we're gonna get the homology right here at this location with it being a surjection will be zero. This location, maybe we don't know what it is. Um, but um, and over here, since this is a monic, we're gonna get a zero and then something here, we're gonna zero something and we get two different things. Okay, that's what happens on the first page when we take um, vertical homology. Now let's, um, <clears throat> now let's uh, take uh, the next step for vertical is then horizontal and you're gonna, um, and then see these arrows. These are the arrows between the homology of the, uh, the horizontal homology of the vertical homology. So we're going to take horizontal homology of this vertical homology. Now we might not know exactly what we get, um, and that's okay. But notice that we're going to get some stabilization because we have a zero here, and we have this in here. And basically, we're, when we take more homology with respect to this arrow, we're not going to. We're we'll between zero and zero. Nothing's ever going to change. This is going to stay the same. Um, uh, this is going to stay the exact same as we as we move from that particular location, um, so it stabilizes. So, uh, in fact, um, thinking about what happens here, so we took vertical and then we do horizontal. But notice, even in the horizontal, we get the same thing: zero question mark zero and zero question mark zero. And that means that we've actually stabilized already in this case. And we're just going to keep going stabilizing. It's going to look the exact same no matter how we move from that from here on out, which means, um, and, but remember what we had before? The homology of the, on this diagonal was zero, which means that the only way that this can stabilize is for it to be zero. So we're done. If we know that's zero, then we know that this had, had to have been an epi to begin with. So that's all. Thanks for watching.